This is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is season, season six, six of, of Better, Better Let, Let Me, Me Tell You. you. Gente, so we are here today with somebody again. I don't know why I keep inviting hosts to this show. They're only going to make me look bad by by comparison. <laughs> These are people who do it for a living. But he hosts En Casa con Telemundo. We have with us today Carlos Adian. Thank you so much for joining us, man. What a bienvenido. Gracias, gracias. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Um, it's always um, fun to just speak about many things going on. So I'm excited. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, no, and it's it's exciting for us because you are somebody who's done a lot of firsts. Um, and again, I get a lot of my information online and Wikipedia, so it could be right, it could be wrong. You're going to correct me, por si acaso. I think he's mostly right. Okay. So you'll be fine. Okay, okay. <laughs> ya, ya veremos, ya veremos. Um, no, you were at one point the youngest on-air personality in Spanish language media, right? Isn't that true? I think I still am. When it comes to hosts, mm -hmm. um, I am the youngest one. I'm 28 years old. However, I started when I was 19. So for me, it's been a um, beautiful journey. It's almost um, 10 years in the industry. But that's been something that I behold. <laughs> that's crazy. 19. At 19, I didn't know what the hell I was doing with my life. Mucho menos, like, una carrera. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, that's, it, that's the good... That's one of the advantages that I had. Um, the fact that since I was like 15 years old, I knew what I wanted. Um, I graduated from high school in Orlando. So I always had my goal to move to Miami, to do something in the industry, communications. I just love that. Um, so it wasn't really a challenge for me to know what I wanted in life. However, I knew that was an advantage because back when I was in high school, I knew that many people, like many students that were graduating with me, didn't even know what they wanted. So for me, it was like, am I, is it okay for me to be 16 years old and know what I want in life? So yeah, that, that kind of helped me because I never wasted time. I, I knew what I wanted right away and I worked towards that. And what was it about about this you know career that you knew, o sea, so young? Because again, I'm, I'm gonna be 45 and I still don't know what I wanna be when I grow up. So, <laughs> you know, you knew so young. How, what was it about it that you were like, no, esto, dale. You know, ever since I was little, um, my grandma and I, we would watch TV so much. Like, we were consumers, television consumers, like crazy. So that kind of shaped me on what I wanted to be. Um, the fact that my grandma would always support me and she would be like, oh, one day you'll be there. Like, I was already thinking of being a TV host without knowing that I really wanted it, you know? Oh, I mean, I was so little. I was seven years old, eight years old. So the fact that I grew up watching TV, Telemundo and Envision um, in Puerto Rico, that really helped me to um, knew what I wanted. Like, I remember myself practicing in the shower as if I was interviewing somebody else, as if somebody else was interviewing me. Um, there was this famous broadcaster in Puerto Rico called uh, Pedro Julio, mm -hmm. and I would imitate him. Like, I would literally act as if I was him. So, you know, when, when you have a passion for something, when you're passionate about something, you really work towards that. And that was my case. Like, I had the ability of identifying my weaknesses and my um, strengths, and I work with that. But it also sounds like you had the encouragement, right? Which a lot of times is so important, especially with, like, Latino households, right? Because you can want to do something, pero if... Your family's like, see, 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 that's that's nice. Por ahora, you know, while you're in school, like, but you got to do something. Que da dinero, you know, that like, you, like, thought, a real like a real <laughs> job, right? As they say, you know. But it sounds like you had the support of your family from from an early age. I, I mean, at the very least, your abuela, your abuela was behind you 100. To be honest with you, like they wanted it, but at the same time, they were like, just the same thought you had. Like this is for a short time of period, like. My family never took me to a casting. And in Puerto Rico, I always ask them, hey, please take me to this. They're like, no, 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 no. You know, that, that, that's something that they never, like, they, my grandma in particular, she would support me. But because even if I wanted to be anything in life, she would support me towards that. Because she's my grandma and she loved me. But she's not realistic. Um, in contrast, my dad and my mom, 
even my grandpa, they always wanted me to be a politician because I, a lawyer and politician, and that's something that I I also love. I, in fact, mm -hmm. my minor in community in school is also a political sciences because that's something that I love. So my family wanted me to be a politician. That's what they wanted, and they saw that as a real career. In fact, when I started working in the industry, my first job was in Caracol Radio. Sí. It was an internship. Um, so the internship, like like my mom would start seeing me, like, you're not getting paid. This is not a good job. You really need to start doing something else. Because she would see me hustling and making money as a server, but not as a broadcaster. So for her, as my mother, she was concerned back then. So that's the thing. Like, I had the support, but at the same time, they were, like, uh, debating whether... It was the right decision or not for me. I love the fact that, you know, your parents were like, no, 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 don't be a reporter, be a politician, because, exactly. I mean, by un politico, well, that's... they were actually <laughs> referring as a lawyer. They, they really wanted me to be a lawyer. Oh, okay, okay. You never lose a case, you never... But what I really enjoyed about being, like, studying um, law studies was to be a politician. That was my internal goal with my family, but yeah. Mm, okay, <laughs> okay. And, and you studied at FIU, right? You, you, FIU, yeah. Yeah, journalism FIU. and, and poli-sci. I mean, that's interesting that I actually, I think it's as a journalist, you know, obviously, you know, your career's taken a, a turn more towards uh, lifestyle entertainment, right? But I think as a journalist, if you do have that political background, especially nowadays, hell, that's a great benefit, you know, because it you, is. You, you walk into a story with a little bit more knowledge than the average reporter might. And not only that, I think that being a um, broadcaster, regardless of the genre, like, entertainment, um, justice, anything. I think you have to be informed of what's going on in your country, in your state, in your city. I think it's super important. And in my case, I enjoy reading. Like, I read a lot of news. I just consume that a lot. That's something that I particularly like. And, and I think it's necessary for me to have an opinion, even on entertainment topics, having a background of what's actually going on in life. You know, you have to be uh, inform of anything so having that um minor is a plus for me um and i really appreciate it and i and i i actually don't want to stop studying uh, now i'm looking into um doing my my other degree you're gonna get like a <clears throat> master's now i want to do a master i want to do a master but i don't want to do it in communications i want to find something else to do my master um but that's something that when i have more time probably in a year I'll start working on. I have already look up, look up into um, that because that's something that I'm very interested. In. Well, maybe your masters can be in like culinary arts. Yaka, you've opened up a restaurant here in Doral. Like, I mean, no, because you're not busy enough, sir. Hosting a show yeah. five days a week, planning a wedding. No, 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 Six no. Six no. days a week. Vamos a, vamos a abrir un restaurante también. Like, let's just you know complicate life more. I mean, I think that you know, um, the moment I'm living right now. Um, in my career, we're talking about career-wise, mm -hmm. um, professionally as a um, broadcaster. I am enjoying it so much. However, I know that this job won't be permanent. Okay. I, I know that there are many things that can happen in life, and you have to be prepared. And this is my moment to start investing in other things, in actually um, deciding what I want to do after this. Although I would love to do this my entire life, I know that it's it can change, you know, and, and I enjoy knowing that it can change, but I have to act towards that. I have to know what I'm going to do if something happens with this job. So that's why I started investing in other things. And I have my restaurant now, a Fuego Lento. Um, I'm enjoying this process. My family always had business. So um, this is something that I learned from them and that I want to start doing by myself because it's something that I also enjoy. Yeah. I mean, isn't that just the Latino way to hustle? Right. Like we're, even when we have a job, we're like, no, no, no it's that, never that, enough. It's never enough. It's like, that's fine. Pero por si acaso, let me do other things. It's like it's almost ingrained in us from birth. Right. It's like you can't get too comfortable with one thing because you never know when something you know might happen. It, it's, it's crazy to me how many people I've spoken to while doing this show. Similar mindset. It's always that like mentality of like, get your career, do it right. Be serious about it. But diversify hustle you know i think it's super important to do that i mean diversify especially because um you don't want to get tired of what you do and in order not mm -hmm. to get tired you need to get out of the comfort zone 
And for me, this is something that definitely it's out of my comfort zone. And how so did, that's how did, what I wanted. And how did it start? Because I mean, I know I've seen your Instagram. I know you like food. You're a foodie. You know, you, I love you food. love it. But but a restaurant that's a hell of a plunge. It I is. mean, that's a commitment. Just I, I have nightmares of like if I open a restaurant, the the grease trap. The cost of the grease trap alone freaks me the hell out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the sole owner. There's another um, person also in charge of the restaurant and owning the restaurant. So that makes me like, okay, that makes my job easier. Um, let's put it that way. But I'm very focused in it. I, I, I just love it. So the way it came out is um, this restaurant, the, the owners, they came to my birthday. They were the catering on my birthday. And then they saw um, the birthday, they enjoyed the birthday with me. And they were like, you know what? We're looking for someone like you to be a part of this. Are you willing to do it? We started talking, we had conversations from January till almost May. No, no, April. And then in May, we close it out and we make it happen. Nice, so what kind of food is it? I mean, entice me, make me make me go to Doral <laughs> for your restaurant. It's Venezuelan Chinese parrilla. So oh. it's a beautiful fusion. That's wonderful. It's, yeah, I mean, the food is amazing. That's. Uh, the, the restaurant has been running for almost um, three to four years, um, but now we just rebranded it. We call it a fuego lento, um, and I'm there now. So yeah, the restaurant is this Chinese culinary cuisine, but also the Venezuelan way. So it's parrillita, carnita rica, rosito chino, pequeños. Um, it's just good food. Okay, I'm sorry. I think a little bit of saliva just came out while you were describing all of that because it sounded <laughs> phenomenal. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Sounded absolutely phenomenal. I wanted to shift, you know, a, a little for a moment here, and and you know, earlier we mentioned how you you were the you were probably still are the youngest on air Hispanic uh, you know media personality, but I think you and correct me if I'm wrong. You also hold another distinction, which is I believe that you and your your fiance uh, at the time. Were the first gay couple on the cover of People in Español? Is that is that correct? Well, Cani Garcia with her um, girlfriend, they they were the first um, lesbian and we were the first gay. So yeah, okay. I guess that's, <laughs> it's, that's it's a way. distinction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is I, I guess it's a distinction. Um, but yeah, it, it's something beautiful, you know, that the the fact that we can already make these um, things happen in twenty twenty four makes me really happy. Makes me um, I don't know how to put it, but like realize it, you know, it mm-hmm. makes me feel like there's a change coming and I, and I love it. Yeah. It's funny to me how it's like we're in 2024, right. And there's still the first, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's like, really? Like I still, I'm still not over the fact that Miami day just had its first female mayor ever, right? Like four years ago or whatever. And I was like, but really now, like it took this long to happen, you know, and and it's just certain things you take for granted, and and it's it's lovely to meet the first, uh, you know, to do it on people in español. Yeah, I love it. I mean, when, when he came, when it when it happened, when um, Carlos and I did this, they they offered us the the cover, and we we're like, oh, awesome! But we just didn't know the impact that that cover would have. Right. So it made us really happy, and we're just super happy too because of our wedding. Yeah, well, it's been an amazing journey. Listen, I I can't wait to see the wedding pictures because you know, I'm a sucker for for just wedding pictures or the, the storybook <laughs> of it all. You know, the romance. Um, so let's talk a little bit about En Caso, en, sorry, En Casa con Telemundo. Now, the origins of that show was COVID, right? Like it, it basically started because of the coronavirus. Everybody was at home, and what Telemundo had the idea. It's like, well, ya que todo mundo está en la casa. Let's do En Casa con Telemundo. That's exactly what happened. En Casa con Telemundo, the name says so, you know. That's the name um, that they put because the, the show apparently was only going to last for 20 days. It's been four <laughs> years already. They in were the- like, we need this show. People are in their house. They need something relaxed. They need something fun for 30 minutes. Everybody's watching TV, so we need to do something about it. And the something about it was En Casa con Telemundo. It was a 30 minutes um, long show. And it started evolving, but for good. You know, it, it started captain like people' attentions. Um, all the artists started like they started going to the to the show. Um, the ratings started going up, so they were like, you know what? Let, let's extend it for an hour. They extended it for an hour. Let's extend it for two hours. They extended it for two hours, um, and then because of all these the contract scene and stuff. 
it went back to one hour and it's been amazing you know the results has been amazing um people are loving the show we just talk about entertainment all day it started with good news only but then it started evolving like i said right. you know and we started talking about entertainment gossip lifestyle you know there's a little bit of everything in that show and i just enjoy working every day on that phenomenal project it's amazing how something like you, like you said you know yeah it's just maybe 20 days you know i think i heard this little corona uh-huh. thing right and yet, so many things that happened during that year are still around, right? And, and they're still impacting us, and they've grown and now they've become part of our lives. And, and it's, it's crazy to me to think that, like, there, there's before, you know, what is it? It's BC, right? Before Corona and, and AC, corona, right? Exactly. And after Corona. <laughs> and, and here we are, like you said, four years later, we're still talking, and, and this show is going stronger than ever. Yeah, pandemic changed everything. I mean, some people were affected. Badly, other words affected in a good way. Uh, I was fortunate to be one of the affected in a good way, um, and I think that's the that's the way it works. You know, um, when there's crisis, there's always people that benefit of it, and there's others that just are affected by it. Um, and this show has been a blessing for me because in Telemundo I was doing many things, but I was not doing anything. <laughs> I was working. In- <laughs> I was working in every single show. I was working in Suelta la Sopa, in Expo right. Total. Uh, I was working in many, many, and this show actually like put me in the right track. And mm. it's been a big blessing for me, and I'm just very thankful with Telemundo. Yeah, yeah. Lo único que faltaba que te pusieran en el ex latón, right? Just I know, <laughs> but I wouldn't do I wouldn't do well there. So <laughs> I, you listen. I think you do way better than I would. I would show up and I'd be, <laughs> I would like get off the plane and I'd be like, I'm tired. I'm just gonna go sit over here now. Like you, you, you fit people go do things. You know exactly. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, the realities are amazing there. So I love it. Yeah, no, no, no. It's great, and I mean, look, you. It, it's funny because you, you were, you started off as a reporter, and it's you've really made your own lane, which I think is so important, you know. And you continue to do so, whether it's as you know, a trailblazer. I'm going to go ahead and use it um, for for what you've done and continue to do. But it's so amazing to me how a lot of times people, you just said it, it's like I was doing everything but nothing. And you found your lane, and now you've started to adapt it and grow it and mold it. And so you you turned it into what you wanted to. Obviously, there's producers and everybody else involved. But I feel like you helped shape that program, you know, as a team. And a lot of times, that's what people need to do. They need to make their own lane. That's one of the blessings, um, like I mentioned, um, the fact that I made my own lane and the fact that I was willing to do anything for the show. Um, because sometimes um, what happened, I don't want to talk about anything, anybody in particular, but sometimes like we just put effort for that hour. Okay, the show, I just come here with the prompter, do whatever I have to do. Yeah. I was so into it, you know, like everything. If I had to do this interview, I don't like this segment, let's find a way to change it. And they work with me to make the show feel good, you know, um, because at the end of the day, we're the ones that have the feeling. We're the ones that... That, that, that portray everything on, on on TV. So it was a teamwork, but we were able to do it because we were so compromised with it that, that the engagement we had with the show was just amazing. That on one side, and then on the other side, the fact that I also work in news, I even did sports, one in the local station. I've done everything in Telemundo. So that... You did weather also, too, right, at one point? No, I did traffic. traffic. I actually started doing traffic report um, for three years. Um, in Channel 51, but that was amazing. I mean, that that's where I learned how to improvise on TV. He taught me to be like loose, to do this and this and this. And being on a local station helps you to grow in many, many ways. And then when you go to the network, this is easy. I got this. <laughs> Put me to do anything that I'll do it. I love it. I love it. That's the attitude I love to hear. You know, again, if not for the passion that you put into it, the show would not be the success. I mean, it probably would have lasted less than 20 days, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like you were saying earlier. So definitely, you know, you and, and, and the rest of the honor team, it comes through. Um, you know, you guys are definitely doing a great job. And I can't wait to see what's next. And I also can't wait to eat at your damn restaurant, man. Like, Come here anytime you want. You're more than welcome. Um, I thank you for this, for these um, beautiful wishes. And yeah, having passion on everything you do is, is the key to success. I just love that. I mean, I actually was talking about it um, on another podcast, in fact. I was mentioning the fact that on my first job in the radio, I was not getting paid. That's when my mom told me, oh, don't do it. You can't do it. 
if I would say no to that job just because I wasn't getting one dollar, I wouldn't have achieved everything I'm achieving mm-hmm. right now because there is a path for everything. There's a way for everything. Everybody's clock is different. And that's what we need to understand. Yeah, no, absolutely. We wouldn't be having this conversation right now if you hadn't taken mm-hmm. that unpaid internship. I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Completely. Uh, bueno, oye, Carlos, thank you again for, for stopping by. I know that, I mean, I've, we've just listed every single thing you're doing. You are beyond busy. Like, busy looks at you and is like, coño, como tiene cosas de tipo. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, you're insanely busy. So thank you for taking a minute out to, to chat with us, man. And success on everything. But I think you're just one of those guys who does... Who's successful? You just do shit right, man. Oh, I thank you. I love your your energy. I love the way you're like giving me good wishes. Thank you very much for the time, and thank you to your audience for listening to my beautiful story. All right. Pero let me tell you is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero let me tell you, freestyle is composed by Michael Angelo Lamlaplex the official gay guy and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on itunes